Rub up your engines! Well, researchers in Tokyo say that they're unveiling a radical breakthrough in batteries that they can use magnesium instead of lithium. And of course, if you know anything about chemicals, there's a lot of magnesium everywhere. They found a magnesium conductivity breakthrough, they say. They won't have to use lithium, they can use magnesium. The Tokyo University of Science says, hey, they're going to be able to use magnesium. But of course, let's take the salt with a grain of salt, people. We've heard so many things about solid state batteries that don't exist yet. And this is a university research. The research, they get to reality, sometimes it never actually happens at all. Or they find out that, oh gee, we finally made our magnesium battery and it explodes, or it doesn't hold the charge very long. Nobody knows how long it's going to take this idea to make it into reality to make gigantic batteries that can power cars. There's solid state batteries out there. They can't use them in cars. They can't scale them up yet. The design that they have there. It seems every day they said there's a radical new battery breakthrough. Well, let's wait till the rubber hits the road and they make an actual battery that'll fit in an actual car and see if the stupid thing works and lasts over time. It'd be great if this works to conduct the electricity instead of expensive lithium. Of course it would be a great idea. Will it work? No one's going to know until time passes and they actually build the things. And even scientists say, well, we're working on increasing the conductivity level of the magnesium. We're still at the design stage here. If it does work, of course, then that gets rid of the grip that China has on the lithium. It's extremely cheaper to make. Will this magnesium idea actually make solid state batteries? Only time's going to tell. And from my experience, it takes a long time for this stuff to actually be created and be able to build on a mass production production scale and then find out if it actually works in real vehicles driven over the course of years in hot climates, cold climates. Believe you me, it's going to be a long time before, if ever, we see magnesium batteries in cars. Don't think you're going to be buying solid state magnesium batteries next year. <laughs> this is way in the future, if ever. Well, there might be a big problem with 1.65 million Jeep Cherokees from 2014 to 2020. U.S. safety regulators are looking into the problem. Enough people complained it's not a recall yet, but it might turn into one. It says that water can get into the computers that control the brakes. And so it can turn on your electric parking brakes while you're driving down the road. Wouldn't that be phenomenal? You're going 65 miles an hour on the highway, all of a sudden the car decides it's going to slam the brakes on. <laughs> There's a recipe for disaster. Here's yet another reason old Scotty thinks, why are they making electronic parking brakes? The old ones, you either pulled on a lever and the cable pulled them, or you stepped on the pedal and the cable pulled the brakes. A pretty trusted system that works. It would only come on when you either stepped on the pedal or pulled up on the handbrake, right? But no, everything has to be electronic. Well, now they're looking into 1.4 million of these things that they might go bad and they're going to have to replace the computer systems on. They're looking into this. They may make a recall, but I know how the recalls go. A lot of times it's total BS. They would have to spend a fortune replacing the computer modules in all 1.34 million Jeep Cherokees. I've seen some of these recalls. Oh, oh, we'll we'll wrap it in a plastic bag so the water can't get in, or some nonsense like that, right? They're always trying to find a cheap way to fix it on recall, so they don't have to spend a bunch of money. You know, first they always try. Well, it's a software. We'll just reprogram. I mean, half the time that never fixes anything. But you know, they fight it tooth and nail. They don't want to lose money. It would cost them a fortune. Now, if they wouldn't have these stupid electronic computer-controlled electric parking brakes, it would have never happened in the first place. But they do. Now they might have to recall. 1.34 million of them because you might be driving down the road and the brakes. My advice is don't tailgate any Jeep Cherokees. Who knows? The parking brake might just lock on in front of you and you end up smashing into them. So don't get too close to Jeep Cherokees when you're on the highway. And if you own one, <laughs> be prepared for a really quick stop if the brakes decide to turn themselves on because of water intrusion into the braking computer module. WARXX says, I have a 2006 Acura RS. X, 141,000 miles. There's a rattle. It sounds like maybe it's a timing chain. I figure it's probably the tensioner. But should I get a timing chain replaced as well? Say you got 141,000 and you hear a rattling noise. Well, it might be a good idea to replace it all. But here's the thing. The tensioner itself is going to cost you a lot less money to change out. The timing chain assembly, you got to take the whole engine apart. It's going to cost you a small fortune to have that replaced correctly. It's a very expensive deal. A lot of times it only is the tensioner. 
And sometimes it's not even the tensioner itself. It's that it's not getting tensioned because the automatic tensioning part of it that pushes it against the chain is carboned up and clocked. So before you spend any money, get a can of the ATS, my friend Bernie in New Mexico, engine oil cleaner. Put it in the engine. Idle at about 1800 RPM for about 20 30 minutes, then change the oil and filter. I have fixed some of those by doing that. The automatic tensioner isn't popping the tension because it's carboned up and it's stuck with carbon. That can clean it out. If that fixes it, you can thank Scotty for a real cheap fix. Cost you 30 bucks to buy a can of the stuff and it might fix the whole thing. Great. If not, then you got to decide do I want to try a tensioner or should I replace it all? Get a price difference between the tensioner and the chain. You might say, I think I'll try just the tensioner first because those chains are pretty well made. They can last quite some time. They're really well made on the Acres, but you might want to try the cleaning first. Brandon Pictures of Scotty. I bought a new Camry. The dealer installed an aftermarket alarm without documenting it. Then they removed it and I have electrical issues. Dealer says there's no issue. One, the dealer's an idiot. You never put an alarm system on top of an alarm system. All right, a new Camry already has an alarm system on it. It works perfectly fine. You do not need to add another one. I've seen people do it though. When you add another aftermarket alarm on top of the Toyota alarm, it can do all kinds of squirrely things. And then you said they removed it. Well, it's too late then. It could have already done the damage. Now they say they didn't do anything, but it's acting funky. It's a brand new car. Take it in, hire yourself a lawyer. If they're not gonna be willing to fix it, hire a lawyer and say, you guys took that out. It doesn't work right. Now they say, you see, without documenting it, well, you got have some kind of documentation or pictures or something because if you don't they'll just lie and say oh well we, we never touched it right this is the big reason I tell people you ever go to the dealer everything get it in writing if they say there's nothing wrong get it in writing customer said had this oh we can't there's nothing wrong so you have proof that you took it in so they can't BS you always get documentation do not trust those guys they're crooks and if they don't write it down on paper they'll deny the whole thing get it on paper somehow John Rodriguez says I have a 2007 Camry LE 200,000 miles it burns about five quarters Quartz oil between 4,000 mile oil changes. Should I be concerned? Well, that's the four cylinder Camry that has the engine that burns oil. They did not make the piston rings right. Now, you might go to Toyota and gripe. They rebuilt a lot of the engines free, but it doesn't seem they do it anymore because they're too old. But my grandson has the same vehicle, the same thing. It burns oil. He just adds oil. He came to visit me when I was in Rhode Island to Rhode Island and back. So he burned some oil. He added oil. It ran perfectly fine. As long as you keep adding the oil and it runs okay, what the heck? Because to fix it, you'd have to rebuild or replace the engine, but they can still run years that way. Ezekiel Aguilar says, Scotty, what's your opinion on 2016 Ford Focus manual training? How long would it last me? Would it be reliable? Interesting enough, I'm working on a 2014 Focus today. It's got 194,000 miles and it still runs okay. It's all beat up looking. Headlight covers are all faded away plastic. You know, you can't see them. They look all horrible. Paint's peeling off, but it still runs pretty good. And it's an automatic. The standard transmissions are even better. So, it can last quite some time if you keep changing the oil. Driving conservatively, you never know. They're Econobox cars. They ride like Econobox cars. They're generally noisy as heck as they get old. You hear every bump and creak in the road, but they can still run, especially with the manual transmission. The automatics were the weakest points in those cars. Kyle D. says, Scotty, would you recommend an Audi A3? Yeah, I'd recommend it to my worst enemy, so get even with them, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Audis are endless money pits. I worked on Audis and I thought these are the most ridiculous design cars. You had to take a motor mount off in order to change the stupid fan belt on the car. That's how dumb they were designed. And they're 10 times worse today. Yeah, they're fun to drive. They're zippy. They handle well, but they're endless money pits as they age. You're throwing your money away if you buy an Audi. It's your money. You can do whatever you want with it, but that's what happens to them. <laughs> <laughs> Dennis K says, Scotty, I'm looking for a good first car, not CVT. Any ideas? Well, one, you might change your idea. If you're going to buy a brand new car, if you buy a brand new like Toyota Corolla or Honda Civic, they have CVT transmissions and they work fine. My son's got a four-year-old Corolla with a CVT and he loves it. And he's a very aggressive driver. Toyota and Honda make good CVTs. Don't have any problems. But if you really don't want to get a CVT transmission, then get an older version of those when they didn't make them. Don't get a new one, get a used one. They can last an awful long time and they always made pretty good transmissions either way. Modern ones that at least Toyota and Honda make, they're pretty bulletproof too. They're pretty well made. They didn't used to be in the very beginning. Even Toyota had problems with their CVTs earlier, but they don't anymore. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.